We live in such a strange time, and I'm sure people have said that throughout time, but this is really strange times. <laughs> you know, it's, there's a lot of really horrible stuff going on that I'm sure you're aware of. And if you aren't, let me tell you, there's a lot of horrible stuff going on. And there's a responsibility that we have as people who aren't in the worst of situations, not having to run from bombs or bullets or rape or starvation. And that could change within a year, any place at any time, it does whether it's political disasters or natural disasters. But at this point in time, this weekend, we have this privilege of really being able to reflect, really being able to inquire. And I don't in any way want to equate the horrors that we are aware of <coughs> in so many places. Slavery, war, terrorism, barbarism with the horror that's in our own minds. But, <clears throat> but they are of the same sort, not the same magnitude, but the same sort. And if we are willing to take responsibility for ending the war, the barbarism, the slavery, the horror, in just this one spot of Mother Earth, then we're actually available. Who knows how we will be used? I mean, Ramana has been used since his awakening, and he never left his mountain. We have other examples of people who preached all over the land from their awakening. So we can all be used in different ways. But if we just are used from our anger, or our sadness, or our fear. We just contribute to it finally. Because if you look at all the terrible events that are happening over the world, you, you see that they are coming from anger and deep grief and despair and fear. And that's the same dynamic that happens in our own minds until we are willing to retreat from it. I know the sense of urgency in the world to fix it, to do something, to, to help, but it's useless unless you are willing to retreat and not, and not add to that suffering. Then you may, as I said, be used, many of you, will be used in extraordinary ways. But really used, fully used. Not used so that you can get some relief from your anger or your fear or your despair. But used because you are here and you aren't distracted by your own internal war. You aren't distracted by the, your own story, the past and the future. And when you aren't distracted, there is enormous energy, the energy of attention that is freed. And then we will see. I mean, if you, you know any history, you know that civilizations have slid into darkness many times. And all of the, the great aspects have been lost many times, more times than we even know. <laughs> And there's always a possibility that if you are willing, and you're not alone in this, there are people all over the, the planet at this very moment taking that responsibility. So you are supported in this, but, and you are essential because you have the privilege, you have the possibility of reflection. And many don't, most don't, on the planet. You're at the tip of the pyramid. And usually, at that place of privilege, we just regress back into our own 
yes, what about, but yes, but remember what happened, or oh, but what could happen? And so we, we blow it off. So I'm really inviting you to seriously, not gloomily, but seriously take advantage of your privilege and of the privilege that we have to be together in this kind of setting, in this place, in this time, this lifetime, this moment, and be free. Really be free. And then we will see there is a power that's unleashed in that that none of us has control of. But it's free. I'm not inviting you to imagine your reality or direct your reality. I am inviting you to take responsibility for this presence this time on Mother Earth, this precious body, this precious human incarnation. Not responsibility as a club, or a burden, or a duty, but responsibility as the freed attention that can actually respond, that is free to respond. So, in that sense, the, the horrors of the world can, are a catalyst for the world to awaken. But we don't know about the world. We know about this weekend. We know about each of us in each other's company, in each other's consciousness. Meeting to deeply inquire what is true, who am I? So I welcome you to this, and I invite you to this, and we go together. I'm in the role of leadership, and I I like that role. (laughs) (laughs) But that doesn't mean the director. We will discover how this unfolds in your particular lifetime your particular set of flesh and bones, history. And in that we will, we will truly meet. And may our meeting serve all being, so that all being everywhere may discover what it is to be free, what it is to be responsible, to be true. I had a meeting with the volunteers last night, really beautiful meeting, and someone came up, I'm not sure if she's even here today, but she was speaking about how she was beaten down by her, the way I heard it anyway, maybe there was an external component, but the way I heard it was by her internal self-abuse. I mean, finally, it's the same dynamic, internal or external. And how, just in speaking with her and her willingness to to expose that and to see that, she could actually see that the way out of that was quite simple. It wasn't complicated. It didn't demand that she slit her wrist or cut her throat. It just demanded she say, no to abuse, and yes, to freedom. No to the totalitarian voice in our heads, and yes to the possibility of true equality. That's what I mean by taking responsibility. For her, it was a a story of, it was a self-torture. I suspect we all have our versions of that, but In particular, that was hers. Yours may be something that's totally about somebody else. 
But if you're willing to expose that to yourself, you may or may not come up here and tell us about it, but just to, to tell the truth. That's really what I'm saying. Tell the truth. The truth is the key. And then we can tell the truth together and the deeper truth. So, all on board? Good now.